Good evening, and welcome to tonight's concert presented by the Millican Symphonic Wind Ensemble. I'm Brian Justison, Director of the School of Music, and I'm here to extend a very special welcome to all Millican alumni tuning into this and the many other 2020 virtual homecoming broadcasts. Of course, no one could have predicted that we would be sharing this stay at homecoming experience through computers, phones, tablets, and TVs, nor that the wind ensemble would be transformed into small groups of masked musicians spread across the Kirkland stage. However, conditions surrounding the pandemic have caused us to consider our responsibility to others and respond accordingly. Tonight, the Symphonic Wind Ensemble will perform an eclectic program of chamber music featuring our wonderfully talented students and inspiring faculty. The view from the director's chair is always spectacular, but even more so in light of the many achievements which transcend persistence and define new baselines for achievement amid the many challenges we face. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Corey Seepy to the screen to introduce the first piece. Well, thank you, Brian, and thank you for tuning in this evening. We begin tonight by going back to a much simpler time. If you've had a glance at the program using the link right down here, you may have noticed that our first piece predates the rest of the repertoire by over a century. In 1881, Richard Strauss was only 17 years old, slightly younger than the musicians you'll hear performing tonight, yet he was already composing remarkably beautiful music. His serenade in E-flat features simple yet stunning lyricism that would foreshadow his mature operas. With just 13 players in this ensemble, it's also worth noting the rich textures that Strauss is able to produce through his skilled orchestration. In fact, his father, Franz Strauss, was a professional horn player in Munich at the time, so young Richard has, had, has actually expanded the traditional classical or romantic era harmony ensemble to include a full complement of four horns rather than the usual two. We hope you enjoy this peaceful and charming serenade by young Richard Strauss.
Hello, my name is Atash Copley and I wrote Serenade. Originally, Serenade was supposed to be a anti-Serenade. Um, it was supposed to take the idea of being in love and falling out of love. Um, instead, I wanted to take it to a different approach. I wanted to take it from the idea of the starting stages of meeting someone for the first time. And with the first movement, it begins with a little bit of mystery. Um, two people who obviously like each other, but won't say anything to each other. And in the second movement, it is more of a feeling of nervousness and excitement for what's going to happen next. And in the third movement, it is a waltz. And that is the awkward first date so to speak and in the fourth movement both people understand that they love each other and they want this relationship to grow and the fourth movement the finale is a giant dance with all the instruments i would use this instrumentation because of how unique it is in my opinion and how unique this concept is of meeting someone and falling in love with someone and how unique it is for each person, no matter who you are. Um, falling in love is always a ride and it's very unforgettable. So I hope you enjoy Serenade.
The second movement is called Echoes of the Set Bells. I use the cello and the chamber winds to imitate the ancient Chinese set bells, which is dated about 11th century BC, made from bronze. Every bell could produce two tones, played in different positions. They are grouped from three to 64 bells as a set. It is a melody instrument, so it was played in orchestra in the ancient court. In our movement, Echoes of the Set Bells, I would use the cello to play the melody, and it's echoed by the uh, percussion instrument, which is made from metal, and it sounds like a Dun, ding, dun. Those are the pitches found from the ancient set bells. And the uh, ensemble would play the chords like a cluster uh, as in the background, as the echoes. <laughs>
The third movement is called Romance of Xiao and Qin. I used the um, cello solo and uh, wind ensemble to imitate two Chinese uh, traditional instruments. One is called Xiao, which is a vertical bamboo flute, uh, which makes uh, lyrical melodies uh, with uh, delicate lines and grace notes and, and grisandos, uh, such as fingerings. And uh, the other instrument, Qin, which is an ancient plucking Chinese instrument uh, uh, as a seven string sitar. And because in ancient time, the xiao and the qin are always played together as a pair. So I use this tool uh, to support each other when the wind ensemble will imitate the plucking instrument uh, to be in the accompaniment part and, and interact it with this melody. And the melody is taken from the Southern China folk song style. Uh, it is my own composition, uh, yet is in Chinese folk style.
Good evening. Joel Puckett wrote the next piece on the program, Nels for Bonnie, to commemorate his grandfather's passing on August 3rd, 2015. The short elegy for chamber winds and flute is a heartfelt tribute that draws musical inspiration from tolling bells, not unlike Chen Yi does in her cello suite that you just heard. Bonnie Neil Puckett served in World War II, but like many of his generation, rarely spoke of it afterward. He was stationed in Tokyo Bay when the war ended, where he wrote, just to know that the war is officially over is good news to our ears, because on the back of this is the thought of having worldwide peace again. Let us hope and pray that in case of another war, it will be a long way off. We'd like to dedicate this performance to the lost loved ones of all who are listening. We also share the composer's reflection on the sadness that his grandfather must have felt as he watched 70 years pass after writing those words, only to realize that the worldwide peace he hoped he had helped earn is still somehow beyond our collective selves.
Hello, uh, my name is Christopher Harris and I am the composer of the piece that you're about to hear. Uh, originally, I Would Live in Your Love was written for men's chorus and it's set to the, the words of Sarah Teasdale. Some of those words are, I would live in your love, uh, I would empty my heart of its own dreams, I would beat with your heart, I would follow your soul wherever it leads, uh, I would live in your love. Uh, so it's a very passionate piece of music. Uh, it has been adapted to, to brass instruments today, uh, and I hope you enjoy. Um, big shout out to Dr. Corey Seepi and to the instrumentalist bringing this piece to life, um, and also to Millican University for your homecoming. Hope you enjoy. Thanks. Hi everyone, I really wish I could be greeting you in person, but it's great to know that you're tuning in from all over the place to experience tonight's concert. I wanted to offer a special greeting to all band and wind ensemble alumni. 
Hopefully, I'll get to see you in person a year from now at Homecoming 2021. As you may have noticed in the last piece, I'm enjoying my second year of retirement by continuing to teach and play trombone here at Millican. I was smart enough to pass the baton along to Corey Seepi just before this global pandemic, so I could spend more time riding my bike, gardening, and unfortunately this year watching the Red Sox. I have so many fond memories of my 37 years with this ensemble. Thanks in large part to many of you who are watching right now. I hope you are healthy and happy, and I wish you all the best until we meet again. On behalf of everyone here at Milliken, thanks again for joining us this evening. Thanks to Dean Ledford, Director Justison, and the entire Kirkland Fine Arts Center staff for their continued support, and extra special thanks to Richard Ndembe, Kevin Guarneri, and Dane Lisser for their incredible recording and editing. We're also grateful to Molly Berry and the folks over in Alumni and Development for letting us play a part in this year's virtual homecoming festivities. It's always an honor to share the stage with such amazing students. In spite of the many challenges they continue to face these days, their energy, commitment, and passion for music are nothing short of inspiring. On that note, we'll leave you with one final piece by Hiroaki Kataoka called Griffin's Prayer. As we celebrate the past, make the most of the present, and look forward to a bright future, we hope that music will continue to bring us together as we strive to make the world a better place, both here at Milliken and wherever you find yourself this evening. Thank you.